Welcome everyone. Today we will be going over the concept of electrohydraulic flow matching, also known as EFM, in Automation Studio. This concept is derived from post compensation or flow sharing and was introduced by Bosch Rexroth. This concept is often applied in hydraulic systems with multiple actuators, such as agricultural tractors or construction machinery, and its objective is to have load independent and proportionally controlled speed of the system functions. This is done by controlling flow through orifices and ensuring the differential pressure is kept at a desired level. Let's look at an example. Here the heaviest load on either actuator will be sensed by the pump but will also be transmitted to all the sequence valves downstream of the control orifices. This will ensure that an equal pressure will be required to open these valves maintaining the pressure drop controlled at these orifices. In this case, there is equal cracking pressure in both lines, so the flow should be equal for the same orifice opening. On the left, we have a traditional flow sharing architecture with mechanical feedback, while the one on the right is a modern EFM version using an ECU, which is short for electronic control unit. The image on the right shows an accurate representation of the EFM concept and was taken from a research paper posted by Carl Eric Rydberg from the University of Linköping. Now let's look at how the entire system works. First off, the ECU will output signals based on various types of information, including input signals from pressure sensors at different locations in the schematic. A signal will be sent to the proportional orifice to control its opening. In parallel, Another signal is sent to the pump to control its displacement, which will optimize the pump's output flow to reduce losses. Essentially, the ECU is programmed to maintain a differential pressure at the orifices electronically using the signal received from pressure transducers. Controlling the pressure drop across the orifices effectively controls the flow rate, since according to Bernoulli's law, the flow rate is proportional to the square root of the differential pressure. The electronic method has a similar objective as the traditional system, where feedback and communication between components is done hydromechanically, but flexibility given by the electrohydraulic components allows better system efficiency and response speed, provided that the controller is properly configured. Here we have two examples of circuits implementing the concept of EFM. Both circuits include a swashplate pump, but the one on the left has a mechanical displacement control while the one on the right is controlled electronically. Both pumps use electronic load sense. The controlled variables are the orifice opening and the differential pressure. The operation of the left circuit works by inputting the desired differential pressure and the system will adjust the orifice and pump's output flow accordingly. The controls of the right circuit are ensured by an algorithm which is continuously computing a signal generated by PID controllers and lookup tables. The indicators on the bottom serve to help you monitor evolution of the system. You'll be able to see the highest load pressure as well as the flow and total system efficiency. We also have a nice little diagram showing how much power is actually used and how much is lost. Now let me demonstrate by running the simulation. So as I explained earlier, the system starts off by opening the orifice. While the orifice is being controlled, the pump will also start displacing fluid into the circuit. In the meantime, the differential pressure is continuously corrected. Now keep track of both system efficiencies as I adjust the differential pressure and the circuit on the left. The one on the right is automatic, but you can follow what the pressure drop should be by looking at the blue text right here. To make a better comparison, I will set the same pressure drop for both circuits and the same load pressure while keeping the actuator and flow similar. Right now, the load pressure is set at 220 bar. Keep in mind that we are at a simulation pace of 0.1 milliseconds, so readings and signal values might flicker. On the left, a PID controller takes care of the orifice openings, and another PID adjusts the valve. Both controllers have the same objective of controlling the pressure drop, while minimizing the required effort. In the right circuit, the pump and orifice openings follow preset values in a lookup table, which is less accurate, but the system is still way more efficient. The orifice allowing fluid back to the tank is also wider on the right than on the left. This orifice opening helps to keep the stability of the system because it cannot stabilize itself like the circuit on the right. 
To summarize what we're trying to understand from this demonstration, the concept of EFM can improve efficiency if you minimize flow and pressure losses by matching the pump output to the demand of your circuit. This can also reduce the required power for the operation of your system. But most importantly, EFM allows you to reach a certain system stability directly. For the next part, I took the liberty to replace all the components with virtual manufacturer components selected from a selection of catalogs from well-known manufacturers. If I were to design some system using two hydraulic motors with different torque requirements as power outputs, I could use the parts I'm looking to integrate directly in Automation Studio using the manufacturer's catalogs and I would have a better idea of the behavior of the system. Here I changed the shuttle valve, sequence valves and proportional orifices to manufacturer components in order to generate a manifold. I could also change non-manifold parts to manufacturer components, which is the case for the pump in this schematic. The benefit of the manufacturer components is the ability to generate 3D manifold blocks. I will put both windows side by side for the purpose of the simulation. First, we will adjust the current through the solenoid to control the output flow of the pump. These pedals here increase the torque on the motors. Let's make them uneven so we can properly show how EFM is applied in the circuit. Take a look at the block. You can see how the flow is traveling and the difference in flow speed in the different channels. Pressure is color coded so you can see the changes as I modify the torque on the motors. Simulation of the 3D internals are also fully taken into account which simulate accurate pressure drop and temperature evolution inside the block as you can see from this mouse over function. Perfect to optimize the performance of the block. And on that note, we conclude this video explaining the concept of EFM. Don't hesitate to ask us questions in the comments below. We will be happy to answer them. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon on Famix channel.